In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world, and those are every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, in thought and word and deed, through the negligence, through the weakness of our own deliverance of us. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us of all that is past, and grant that may serve you in the newness of life, for the glory of your name. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God. Heavenly King, Almighty God, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of God. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, to may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 to 4 and 9 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people should go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has com heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Thanks be to God. Psalm 78, verses 23 to 29. 
And the response is, the Lord gave them grain from heaven. The Lord gave them grain from heaven. The Lord commanded the dark clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them the food enough. The Lord gave them grain from heaven. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and led out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. The Lord gave them grain from heaven. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. The Lord gave them grain from heaven. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith under the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building up itself in love. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were to the place where Jesus had given the bread, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you, were, you saw signs, but because you took your fill of loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, 
not to a food, but that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again and again, as we study the story of our Lord's ministry, we find evidence of his awareness of human needs and of the physical, no less than medical and spiritual. The parables he told to illustrate his teaching often dealt with everyday needs. The Lord's Prayer includes the familiar words, give us this day our daily bread. And that's even more pointed if we take the alternative translation given by some scholars. Give us today the bread for tomorrow. This means that we're really praying for relief, relief from the daily struggle of our, for our needs. Without a respite from continued labour and toil, we have no chance to, to develop our spiritual life. What is this life if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. Certainly, Jesus didn't mean all our prayers to be about our souls and about our spiritual matters, which bring before God all our wants and needs. Indeed, there'd be a certain amount of danger in leaving our bodily necessities out of our prayers. Not only have we a duty towards our suffering fellow human beings, the people afflicted by famine, by natural disasters, by war, revolts, unemployment and so on, which should be our concern at least through helping such agencies as Oxfam, Christian Aid, and so on, as well as imploring our Heavenly Father's assistance in prayers. But we can, we can forget that food, clothing, warmth, and so many other things contribute to our well-being and our lives do ultimately come from God. Don't let us forget to give thanks to God, therefore. Before distributing the feast to the multitude, Jesus thanked God for giving it. At the Last Supper, Jesus made a long and wonderful prayer of thanksgiving over the bread and the wine. Now, Eucharists, now the most important prayer we use is of thanksgiving. And remember, the word Eucharist itself means giving of thanks. The crowds who were present at the feeding of the 5,000 got things wrong in another way. Jesus told them the next day that instead of coming and expecting another free meal, they should have taken in his spiritual teaching. It's all too easy for us to be rather like those people. We may throw away or miss out, out on the chances of learning what God's will is for us if our minds are too set on personal comfort or too filled with personal gain. Let's therefore ask God to help us to remember to pray for daily bread, to supply our material and bodily wants. But let us also ask him for his spiritual nourishment to feed our souls. And let's remember also that the Blessed Sacrament is available to us week by week and more. To build up our spiritual strength, we should be resolved to be regular in our attendance. I am the blood of life, the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And now to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, describe us most justly to you, Almighty Majesty, under the million power and glory, this day and forevermore. Amen. 
we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen as us. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to be made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate on the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made for us to crucify his body and his blood. He suffered death and death. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and then he seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again into the world, the judge of living in the dead, and his kingdom will come to hell. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, for the worship and glory. Who has spoken of the Lord's We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection and the resurrection and the life of the world to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people. We should call for all Christian leaders and those who teach and guard the faith. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for leaders of the nations, especially for Elizabeth, our Queen, for those in authority under her. Give them the gift of your wisdom and the right discernment in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our local communities, especially today for those who live and work on Walton Drive, Walton Court. Rangel Court, Rangel Gardens, and Crantop Gardens, for those who visit our villages. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who do not believe and yet who long to know you, the very word of life. Open their ears to hear your voice and open their hearts to a knowledge of your love in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear them. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear, or sickness, especially those known to us or for whom our prayers are asked. May your loving word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ, especially for those whose anniversaries are in the yearbook. Dorothy Vera Windridge, Clive Popham, Dennis Charles Goody. We rejoice with all your saints, trusting the promise of your word fulfilled. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for peace. The Lord be with you and all the saints. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you created all things from the beginning, 
and formed us in your own image. Through him, you freed us from the slavery of sin, gave the all of a woman to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you set upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people of your own possession. Then, and now we give you thanks, because you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are your glory. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, in the Accept our prayers, Heavenly Father, and your Son, our Savior, Jesus. And as we follow the example and obey his command, grant by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may give us his body and his blood. When the same night he betrayed him, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering himself made with to all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is the Son. Christ is the Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest. It's our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in song and everlasting praise. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be yours ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, our Break his bread to share the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share one body. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not to see you. O Jesus, and I shall be healed.
housing Just one notice today, and that is that uh, uh, there'll be no need for his book for uh, coming to the service next Sunday. Uh, we shall be taking book bookings. You're welcome to come, of course, anyway. That's no bookings next Sunday. Let us pray. Holy Father, who gathered us here at our table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace. Gather people of every race and language to share the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out of the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.